Hi everybody, this is following up to what I just did in Geometer Sketchpad and a lot of these are quick hits. You'll see as we get your laptops or computers running, you're not going to want to grab onto all these things, but the concept of the being able to graph um, and a function and realizing that y as a function of x means that for every value of y there is one value of x and then realizing that a circle is not a function but the fact that sometimes you can have two values of x for a y or two values of y for an x or this the fact that something that can be expressed in x's and y's will be a something on a 2d plane something that can be expressed in x's and y's and z's will be something in 3d and something that can be expressed in x's and y's and z's and time will be a moving 3d shape and so with this, I give you the TI calculator and something we just talked about a little bit in class. We didn't turn about talk about turning it on, but we turn it on and this Y equals, I'm going to hit a clear here, the fact that we can go ahead and put function in here and graph them. And you're going to see that this is a little bit problematic when you just get started if you don't have your settings set right, just like in AutoCAD. So what we always want to do when we turn on our computer, I'm hitting second quit here, is to check the mode, making sure that it's in the right normal degree function, basically. Those three, though, sometimes you'll be dealing in radians. Remember, there are two pi radians in a circle or a revolution, which means in three revolutions, there is six pi radians. So once again, you check the mode, you hit the mode, then out of habit, you go ahead and do something like the tangent of 45 degrees and you think of Jack Herkheimer and say, yeah, the North Star in Wasa is at 40, 45 degrees. The tangent of 45 is 1. And if you don't get it, you know you set something wrong. So let me look up just at lines now. I'm going to put in a function here now. I'm going to hit clear per se and put y equals. And what I like to do first and foremost is just put y equals, and you'll start to see it's this one right here that does the x. It kind of is the one, one to hit if you're filling in an equation. It tends to know to put the x or the theta or the whatever your n if you're doing series, but y equals x. And then you notice that equal sign, that means that it's highlighted, it means it will graph. So when I hit now and hit second quit and then hit graph it shows a line there and what we see here is later on you're going to see that the problem the reason why you don't see a line is you haven't kind of set your window correctly so really before you graph anything you should go to window here and look at these values and so your x minimum might be something like minus 50 your x maximum might be 50 your x scale might be something like that's how often you want to put a little tick mark there. The y min might be minus 50, and your x y max might be 50, and your x scale y scale might be 50. And now when I hit graph, you get that sense that you can see what's going on here. Now one thing we'll point out in class is because of the way that this is set, you want well, your your x to be I think one and a half times your y, but we're going to talk about drafting and really controlling these things in window here, so that things that are supposed to be squares they look like squares, things that are supposed to be circles they look like circles, and so typically it's one and a half times. Let me say let me put this at 75 here, and this is just from memory. We'll talk about what that aspect ratio is. You get a little bit of that in CAD and set that to 75. And once again, hit second quit, though you don't need to, and hit graph. And now you see that that looks like the 45 degree line you know that it is. This here, I don't know what it is right now, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to now, y equals x is one equation. And you might want to then try to go down to the next one and put, now remember in this calculator, you can't use a negative here. Or right, subtract, you need to do a negative. If I say negative and hit that, I will see the section function, the second function, and you can see now you see the two lines. You could play with that for a long time, but mostly you're going to be learning that when we put lines into equations, we like to not do it like that. We like to do it something like this. 1x, if you would, plus, I and mean, I missed it there, i got to go back to here, 1x plus 0 which is the same as 1x, and minus x 
minus, I'm going to go down here, minus 1x plus 0, and hit enter here, and hit graph, and you get the same thing. But the reason why you do it, you're learning to hold place and learning about the slope-intercept formula. So when you go here and I want to make it twice as steep, I can change that number to 2 and hit a graph. And if I want to once again go to here and make it five times steeper than a 45 degree angle and hit graph, I can continue to do that. Or if I want to go into here and go, well, I want it to have a y-intercept going across here. Of, and I would tell you it's a great idea to even put these things in parentheses so you can start to recognize negative 10. So that's going to shift it down 10 on that. And when you hit graph here, you see that it shifted this line down through here. So that is the same type of parent graphing, the same type of graphing that we saw in class today, which was a look at Apple versus Window and that amazing grapher program. Look a little bit earlier in the previous video on Geometer Sketchpad. You know there is GCalc, which is a real free one for Windows. There are lots of things I guarantee you on your phones. This will be things that you can do. And what I'm going to do right now is kind of do the same thing that I just did here in Wolfram Alpha. So I'm just going to do 5x minus 10. y equals 5x minus 10. I'm going to do that without even closing out here. So realize that these are all the same concepts. I'm going to go out to Mozilla and go to Wolfram Alpha. And within Wolfram Alpha I will type graph or plot plot y equals 5x minus 10 and see what it does. Now, this is somewhat natural language, but we'll look at what it does. I might want to put a double equals there, or I might want to do something else, but I'm going to hit that and see what it does. Plot or graph, it should generally know what it's doing, and you see it does the graph here, but what it does not do, it doesn't even out your, um, it does not even out your coordinates there so you're not centered there but we'll try this again plot 0 from 10 from minus 10 to 10 and that should mean it's going to just basically give you the limits of that so you're going to start to see the kind of work you can do in a calculator on Wolfram is very very similar a lot of people are not worried yet are not quite ready for Wolfram Alpha but I want to point out why we're learning Wolfram Alpha or is because mostly because we can go to here and click on that Mathematica form and see that's, if you notice, is the format that's going to teach you some nice succinct rules for working in a lot of different data sets within the curated data sets of Wolfram Alpha. So what we've done in these 20 minutes is kind of capped up or connected you to the fact that it may be tough to get a hold of this to start, but anything that can be expressed in equations of x and y can be drafted or some sort of shape on a plane. Anything that can be expressed in x, y, or z, or in three variables, can be thought of as a three-dimensional shape. And anything that is expressed in four variables, the fourth variable being time, can be thought of as a moving shape. You can go, go up from there, but that's far enough for most of our brains to handle. Wolfram Alpha rocks. TI-83 calculators are pretty cool, but at 125 bucks, right, every now and then you're going to just go ahead and use the program that you can download the emulator, and we'll be looking at that in the next week. So, thanks for listening, and get those computers running, get to math class, stay in math class, work in groups, work at night, use Khan Academy, and get excited about what really, really is exciting stuff for us and our kids. Thanks for listening.